Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi guys, this is Sayyid Sabi and today we are going to talk about how we can prove there is a God in less than two minutes. Assalamu alaikum wa guys, this is Sayyid Sabi and today we are going to talk about how we can prove there is a God in less than two minutes. Now, there are only one of two ways we can prove the existence of anything. Either we see it with our eyes or we deduce it with our brains. Just as if I see a watch or a phone, I can very quickly and accurately deduce that it must have a producer because every production must have a producer. Now in this case, since I cannot see God, I can surely use my brain to deduce his existence, mainly by looking at the universe. Now the universe could have come from one of two places. Either it came from nothing or it came from something. The universe coming from nothing is neither possible nor logical. Why? Well, because only nothing comes from nothing, let alone a humongous complex universe. So we are left with our only option and that is it must have come from something. This something can be the universe itself, a non-living thing, or a living thing. The universe producing itself is not possible either. Because I've heard of a mother producing a child, but a mother producing herself, I've never heard of. Now the universe coming from a non-living thing is not possible either. Because a non-living thing cannot do anything by itself, let alone produce the universe. So again, we are left with our last and only option, and that is, it must have come from a living thing. And just as the intelligent design and complexity of an invention testifies to the intelligence and skill of the inventor, similarly, the intelligent design and complexity and vastness of this universe clearly testifies to the wisdom, knowledge, and power of this living creator. This living creator is who many choose to call God. And we as Muslims choose to call Allah. They say it's a B. Until next time, thank you guys. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi guys. This is Sayyid Sabi, and today we are talking about how we can prove Muhammad is the Prophet of God in less than two minutes. One aspect we can look at are the prophecies of Muhammad in the previous scriptures. Now as Muslims, we do believe that there were several scriptures revealed before the Quran, but they were distorted with time. However, we may still be able to identify some passages from these scriptures that may still be intact by cross-checking with several other sources and scriptures. One such passage we find is the mention of a coming of a prophet in several scriptures. In the Torah, it talks about the coming of an Arab prophet from the children of Ishmael, whose message shall be for all of mankind and not just his own nation like every other prophet. It goes on to mention that this prophet shall come from the mounts of Faran, located in the Arabian Peninsula near Mecca. In the Old Testament, Isaiah mentions similar traits of a similar prophet only to add that this prophet shall ride a camel, which is well known to be the means of transport among the Arabs. The Zabur or the Psalms mention that the followers of this prophet will go on pilgrimage to the house of God located in the valley of Bakkah, which is known to be the old name of Mecca. Even Jesus Christ prophesies the coming of a prophet only after he departs and this is the reason why the children of Israel were expecting the coming of a human prophet after Jesus. In fact, the name of this prophet has also been mentioned very clearly in the Old Testament in the Hebrew version, however, it has been mistranslated in the English language. 
His name has been mentioned 15 times in the Gospel of Barnabas, which has been discarded by the churches as fabricated and false. Even Hindu scholars claim that similar traits of a similar prophet has been mentioned in their scriptures, including his name and the name of his parents. After an objective, fair and critical analysis, we can confidently say that all of these traits do not befit any other individual in human history other than the last and final prophet, Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. Until next time, guys, thank you very much. So how else can we prove Muhammad is the prophet of God? Two other aspects we can look at are the scientific facts and information mentioned in the Quran very clearly as discussed in episode number two and the future events mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad that came to pass exactly as he mentioned. To state a few of these events, the Prophet told his companions that the Muslims, irrespective of the weak state they were in, will not only conquer the whole of the Arabian Peninsula, but will go on and defeat the two superpowers of that time, that is Persia and moving on to the East Roman Empire. What is surprising is that these events did not just take place after the demise of the Prophet, but they also took place exactly in the sequence mentioned at a time when the Muslims were extremely weak and poor, and the mere survival of the Muslims was questionable. Forget about conquering the two superpowers of that time. Just mentioning this was not only far-fetched and highly unlikely, but it wouldn't be wrong if I said unbelievable. The Prophet also told and mentioned that the Muslims will conquer Egypt which till this day remains under the rule of the Muslims. The Prophet also foretold the conquest of Constantinople, which was unimaginable by the Muslims at that time because Constantinople was not only the capital of the East Roman Empire, but it was also one of the most hardest and difficult cities to penetrate. Nevertheless, in the year 1453, the Muslims were successful in conquering Constantinople, more well known today as Istanbul, Turkey. Looking at all of the future events mentioned by Muhammad and several other aspects mentioned in previous episodes, we can logically and reasonably conclude that all of this information was not coming from Muhammad, rather from the Lord of Muhammad, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the one with knowledge of all things, past, present and future, revealed to Muhammad, his last and final messenger. May peace and blessings be upon him. Until next time, guys. Thank you very much. guys today we are talking about whether the Quran has been preserved over time or not see now there are only two ways a text is actually preserved it is either written down or memorized any text that is either written or memorized since the very beginning transferred down through a connected chain of credible individuals until it reaches us is considered preserved no matter how long the time gap may be a text reaches the highest level of preservation when it is both written and memorized since the very beginning. I take full responsibility when I say that the only text that reaches this high level of preservation is the Quran without a second. The Quran is the only text that has been written and memorized both since the very beginning it was uttered from the tongue of Muhammad, transferred down generation after generation, written and memorized by millions without a bit of exaggeration. To such an extent that if we were to compare the Quran from any corner of the world or any century in history, we will not find a single contradiction no matter how much we search. Just to give us a glimpse of how highly preserved the Quran actually is, if we were to take all of the texts in the world and destroy them by throwing them into the ocean, the only text that would be capable to resurrect and revive itself in its original form, letter for letter, is the Quran since it has not just been written down but memorized by millions and none of us happen to be the author of the book as for any other book even if the author himself was asked to rewrite his book in its original form he will not be able to do it so has the quran been preserved in its true form until this day yes yes it has until next time guys thank you very much
So how else can we prove the Quran is the word of God? Two other aspects we can analyze are the future events mentioned in the Quran, which took place precisely as mentioned, and its non-replicability. One of the events mentioned in the Quran in chapter number 30 is regarding the war that broke out between the Romans and the Persians in which the Romans were defeated, that another war should break out. In the span of three to nine years, in the land of Jerusalem, between the Romans and Persians, however this time, the Romans shall be victorious. And surprisingly, it took place exactly as mentioned. What are the chances that Muhammad took a good guess and got all of this and several other future events right and precise? As for the non-replicability of the Quran, due to its linguistic eloquence and several other features, the Quran remains completely unrivaled by any other Arabic speech for 1400 years now. The Quran mentions in chapter number 2 verse 23 to 24 that if you are in doubt in this book, then you come up with a chapter somewhat similar to this book and call upon all of your supporters and friends and gods if you speak the truth. And it goes on to say that if you do not do it and you will never be able to do it, then prepare yourself for what awaits. Now can we think of any author who so confidently challenges the whole universe to come together and produce a single chapter somewhat similar to his book and doesn't just stop there but goes on to say that you can try but you will never succeed. That's not normal folks. Therefore, I repeat myself and say that looking at the scientific facts, future predictions, eloquence and non-replicability of the Quran and several other features, we can logically and reasonably deduce that the Quran truly is the word of God. Until next time guys, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi guys. Today we are talking about how we can prove the Quran is the word of God in less than two minutes. Now for this, we are going to have to use something called logical consequence, which means if we are able to find such content in the Quran, which could not have been produced by any human being 1400 years ago, then we can logically conclude that the Quran has to be authored by someone other than human being. Reasonably speaking, this author has to be whom the Quran claims to be authored by, which frankly is the case in any other book. For the sake of this video, we are only going to analyze the Quran from one aspect, and that is proven scientific information mentioned in the Quran in very clear and unambiguous words. Let's take cosmology for instance. Modern day science has proven with substantial evidence that the heavens and the earth have a beginning. This beginning was in the form of smoke that came together into an unstable point due to which there was a massive rupture known as the Big Bang that led to the creation of our universe as we know it today. This universe is expanding with time rather than remaining stationary. All of this and several other scientific facts have been mentioned in the Quran very clearly 1400 years ago. The Quran mentions in 4111 that the earth and the heaven came together while it was in the form of smoke. It further goes on to mention in 2130 that the heavens and the earth in this state combined as a single entity were ripped apart or separated. It also mentions in 5147 that our universe and space is expanding with time. Now what are the chances that an Arab man, neither able to read nor write, copied all of this from somewhere or just took a good guess and luckily got all of his answers right without a single contradiction to modern day established scientific facts? The only reasonable and logical consequence is that the Quran is authored by the one it claims to be authored by and that is the creator of the heavens and the earth, Allah. Until next time guys, thank you very much. Ooh.